Greetings to all my old friends and new friends, and welcome to this weekend's Global Home Church Sermon. This is a global mega church, reaching 130-something countries around the world, thousands and thousands hear the word of God here every weekend. And the Bible says we're two or three together together. In Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit will be there. We have thousands gathered. The Holy Spirit's here strong. It's a true church. Uh, like all churches used to be, most churches now are fake and phony and frauds. They have fake pastors preaching out off of iPads or fake gospels. You've got watered-down uh, congregation listening to the lies and, and, and milk toast and things that lead them to hell. I feed you the true meat and potatoes from God's word that will lead you to heaven, not hell. Everyone's accepted here and loved. It doesn't matter what your religion is or lack of religion, your sexual orientation, your sex, your social standing. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are. God loves you. Jesus loves you. I love you as well. And I don't take up any offerings. Don't ask for any money. Uh, Jesus paid the price on, on the cross. The Apostle Paul even made tents to uh, supplement his income. I don't believe that anyone should be asking for money for anyone to share the gospel. So welcome here. You're all welcome. It's a safe place. It's a true church. And let's go ahead and have a word of prayer, and then we'll dig into today's word. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us and blessing us. And thank you for another opportunity, privilege. It is for me to be able to bring the word to the masses around the world. <clears throat> I pray that anyone who does not know you as Lord and Savior would find you by the end of this sermon. Those who do know you and need a touch in their life, that you touch them in a special way. Give me the words to reach everyone out there. And again, it's my honor and privilege to be able to bring this word to the masses. And I love you and thank you for everything, Jesus. Amen. Here's a question for you. If you pray for a wicked nation that hates God in every way, do you really expect God to hear you? He won't. All to, I don't live, I live in No America, formerly America, it's no more now. I've traveled around most of the globe, but I don't travel anymore. So I don't know what signs are up where you live at. But around my neighborhood, around my area where I live, I see this all the time. Pray for America. Oh, pray for America. Pray for America's leaders uh, so that God will just bless America. Yeah, right. If anyone believes that God will hear any prayer for America, you're clueless. And for most countries in this world as well, if you think that God's going to hear prayers for your country and for your leaders, you're clueless. Let's dig into scripture first of all. <coughs> and then I'll tell you why God's not going to hear your prayers. <coughs> First Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. As always, I use the King James Version Bible. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made of all men, for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Now, that's what God says originally. Jesus says he wants you to pray for the kings and leaders. Okay, that's that's so you can have godly, honest lives. You're talking about kings and leaders that are godly, that are honest, the world's honest. They they don't do things against the Bible. Because see, we are to follow all of our leaders in this world until what they do goes against the Bible. Then we don't follow them anymore. Then we follow what the Bible says. And here's what the Bible says after this. Jeremiah 7, 16. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, Neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Jeremiah eleven fourteen. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry of prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time and that they cry unto me for their trouble. Jeremiah fourteen eleven. Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people for their good. Isaiah one fifteen. And when ye spread forth their hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye shall when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Isaiah 59, 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Proverbs 1, 28-30. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would, they would none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. 1 Peter 3, 12. For the eyes of the Lord are all are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And then we've got Genesis 12, 3. And I will bless them that, that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now understand <clears throat> that God will always bless Israel. We're always to pray for Israel. Israel is the only country in the world that God has an eternal covenant with via Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We pray for Israel. I hear all the time from Christians, oh, but there's so many Jewish people that are wicked and evil. That's none of our business. 
Our business is to do what Genesis 12, 3 says, bless Israel or God will curse us. God will deal with the Jews in his time. He'll deal with all the Jews, no matter how they live, what they do. They're God's chosen people. You pray for them. Believe what you want to believe. If you don't want to pray for them, that's on you. I pray for them every day. I have for eons. I won't stop till I'm raptured or dead. So every other country in this world is against God right now. It's a, it's a wicked, filthy, evil cesspool. And my country, it's not my country. I just happen to live here. Of no more conforming America is the worst. It's the biggest pigsty on earth. It's the most evil, wicked, filthy, perverted, garbage dump, gut-wrenching hellhole on the face of the planet. Because we export everything around the world. Music, media, movies, everything else. The world follows us. Used to follow us in a because we were in a good it was good because we were a good country. Now we're a, a, a garbage dump, a, a, a godless hellhole for all intents and purposes. Look around you. Look look at your country you live in. Look at all the way that babies are slaughtered in a mother's womb, night and day. People don't care. Look at how churches are now embracing perversion and filth and sexual sins <clears throat> and against God's word. And everybody's accepting it. Look how the world has just turned us back on God. You've got child sex slavery, women and children being sold into sex slavery. You've got all kinds of other slavery. You've got you've got Christians being martyred in record numbers, uh, up to 300,000 or even a million expected this year. That's what I expect. And you've got all kinds of just anti-Semitism around the globe. It's a place that hates God, that hates Jesus, that hates the Holy Bible, that hates true Christians. And does anyone think that God's going to hear your prayers? You need to be praying that individuals in all your countries would find Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yes. Pray for them constantly, night and day. Don't just pray. Put action behind your words. Witness to them. Whether it's handing out gospel tracts, putting gospel tracts in, you know, in secret in stores, handing them out to people, texting in your phone, scripture, and pray, and to, to witness to people, doing videos like I do, putting stuff on Facebook instead of putting babies and, and animals, puppies and kitties. How about putting stuff about leading people from hell to heaven? How about that for a change? But see, most Christians are just, they're lightless. They have no light. They have no salt. They have no spine. They have no guts. They have no backbone. They have nothing. They're, they're living for the devil. They serve the devil. And they further the devil's cause. And they don't care. They don't even know they're doing this, but they don't care. Because they don't want to get out of their comfort zone. As long as it's not their family and friends who are, are, are may not go to heaven, they don't care about the rest of you. And most of them don't even care about their family and friends anymore. They're self-centered. They're selfish. It's the me, 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 me generation. The me, 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 me church. And you have to put me away. Take self away and look for others. I learned it the hard way, my friends. I used to pray for me all the time. God never answered my prayers. God, I, 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 was, a, I was a backslidden, junkie, heroin addict, bad, bad, bad news. Jesus Christ lifted me up out of the mire. I begged him to. He did put me on the rock to stay. Praise the Lord. And that was about 15 years ago. And I will never turn back from Jesus Christ. I will serve him with all I have, though it's not much. Though my righteousness is like filthy rags. I'll serve him until I'm raptured or dead with all that I have. I owe him everything. He died on the cross for me, a perfect man, the God man, perfection. Didn't do anything wrong, died suffering death and, and was treated like garbage his whole life for a sinner like me. And we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But the Bible has hundreds of scriptures that say that salvation is not a one-time deal. It's not, that's why it says in John 3, 16, whosoever believeth in him should not perish and have everlasting life. Believeth, believe, believed, believes is a past, present, future tense word in the original Greek trans transcripts that the New Test Testament was written in. We have to believe until the end or we backslide and don't go to heaven. Believe what you want to believe, I believe the scriptures. And again, that's that's the biggest problem with Christians right now is they don't understand scripture. They don't understand that they all think it's cheap grace. They all think it's just eternal security. Once they had always said it's not. And they'll find out the hard way, many, many, many will, when they're left behind or end up in hell before they have a chance to get right with the Lord. They should have listened to me Teach them what the Bible says. Not listen to my words. Listen to the Bible's words from me. I've done hundreds of videos on, on eternal security. I've actually covered all those hundreds of scripture in multiple videos. <clears throat> Read them verbatim. There's no excuse if you end up in hell because you didn't listen. That's on you, my friends. It's not on me. I have a huge responsibility. I stand before Christ as a pastor and a watchman. I put myself in really big shoes. I already wear a size 15 extra, extra, extra large shoe. Extra, 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 extra four. Ease. 
but I put my spirit and my soul in, in, a, in a much larger pair of shoes by volunteering to be a pastor and watchman. And I won't stand before Christ one day. I have to explain why I was gutless or spineless, had no backbone. I'll keep pushing until the end of the race. I, 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 I'm not going to end up cast away or shipwrecked, like the Apostle Paul said, for those who are backslidden. And Christians don't even understand. They love, they love the, the eternal security crowd. love Apostle Paul. They don't even hear his words. They don't even understand the words coming out of his mouth when he's telling them about being shipwrecked and cast away when you're backslidden. But anyways, all I can do is keep telling you and keep showing you as, and leading by example <clears throat> until I'm raptured or dead. It's amazing, my friends. Stop wasting your breath praying for your country. Stop wasting your breath praying for your evil, wicked leaders. Pray for Israel. Pray for those who are lost. They would come to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Pray for the backsliders. They'd come back to him. And the rest, if you want to keep praying and waste your words, it's up to you. God sees the, the evil in this world. The filth just wafts up into his nostrils. He has to breathe that garbage night and day. I know he's tired of it. I'm tired of it. I can't imagine how tired of it he is. So again, believe what you want to believe. Do what you want to do. That's on you, my friends. I can't do anything about it. All I can do is serve Jesus Christ until I'm raptured or dead. I love you all so much. I, I just thank the Lord for those that follow Jesus Christ with me. You don't follow me. You follow Jesus Christ with me. And just for 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 dec for decade and a half, many of you have, and I've got new ones too. And I praise God for you. And just keep help me get the word out. Share all my videos, all my sermons. I'm sensing relentlessly across social media because of my faith. They hate God, Jesus, and the Bible. As I said earlier, they hate me the same way because I represent them. Help me fulfill the Great Commission and get the word out. Christ commanded us to do it. Help me to do it. You get credit in heaven as well, my friends. For those who get saved and you share what I share with you. If you've never been saved, you're backslidden. Pray the prayer. Do the six steps in a box. Put a video. No one's guaranteed more time in your life. If you like prayer, contact me. I pray for you every day. I love you all so much. And look up, true Christians. A different draw than I. We fly soon. Take care of yourselves. Share this sermon. I pray it blesses you. I pray that it moves you to action above all. You understand. Love you. May God bless you. Bye.